What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Universal Mastery. Welcome back to my public YouTube channel. Now, what exactly am I going to be speaking about in this today's video? I'm going to be talking about something that is clearly very important to understand, just like all the other subjects I talk about, okay? Specifically, I'm going to be talking about why people fail when it comes to communication with a spirit. What are some of the reasons, some of the biggest reasons why people are failing at this practice? There are a lot of people that are starting to get into spiritual practice, starting to gravitate towards the occult, yet they haven't really figured out how to have successful, real communication with a spirit or with an entity to the point where somebody like myself who's had practice in this skill, when I communicate with a spirit, it's literally literally like I'm communicating with someone that is standing right in front of me. I can visualize it. I can sit there for over an hour long and have a real back and forth dialogue mainly taking place within my subconscious mind, unconscious mind. So this is how I communicate when it comes to working with spirits. But once again, I know there's a lot of people that are getting into the occult field and they don't even know how to have any communication. They're really not noticing any changes or things in that nature. So if you're someone who has had these issues or if you're someone who's just curious about the subject in general, then this is definitely a video for you to watch because there's a lot that you can gain from having this perspective, okay? So with that being said, there is one thing to do, and that's simply to stay tuned. All right, let me first start with introducing myself just in case you don't know who I am. My name is Jeremiah Schwartz. I am a professional occultist. I am fully initiated in the entirety of the Kabbalistic tree. I'm studied when it comes to the 22 major arcana of the tarot deck. And I'm also studied when it comes to planetary energies in direct association with astrology. All right. Now, with that being said, so we're speaking about failure when it comes to communicating with the spirit, all right? One of the biggest reasons why there's a lot of people right now at the time that we're in, 2023, why there's so many failed spiritualists or failed occultists, and when I say failed, I don't mean like these people are doomed and these people can't get better or improve. I'm just saying there is a lot of people that are in the spiritual community as of right now that are not really getting too much out of their practice. A lot of them have hit a threshold. And there's a lot of reasons why this threshold exists and why a lot of people have hit it. A lot of it has to do because of programming. And a lot of it simply comes down to basics like discipline. And how serious do you take yourself? And how serious do you take your practice? Like, how far are you willing to go? Or how much time are you willing to um, sit in silence and discipline yourself to do this successfully? So a lot of people lack these qualities. And this is one of the big reasons why there is a lot of failure when it comes to the communication aspect of spiritual um, self-development, okay? So that's right out the gate. That's something that's important to understand. There's a lot of people that are failing in this practice, okay, specifically with communication with spirits. Now, one of the biggest things that I see that is a, a red flag and truly just a formula for just a bland practice, you know, a mediocre practice. And, you know, it starts off sort of nice. It looks nice to the outsider, but the person themselves who's doing the practice is really not getting much out of it, not getting nearly as much as they could. So the, the general pattern that I see is that 
the person that doesn't do it successfully, they have a wonderful setup. They have a, most oftentimes they have a beautiful altar. They have a, a wonderful statue to the entity that they're trying to communicate with. Sometimes they have the sigil. They have all this other symbolism, oftentimes crystals, stones, imagery, planetary symbols, you name it. They, it looks beautiful. They have like a candle in front of them. They have their incense sticks. All of it imagery wise is perfect. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. It's well-rounded in regards to symbolism and correspondence, which is wonderful. But that's the problem. A lot of these people that fail in real spiritual communication, it's almost as if they're using all of the symbolism and thinking that the symbolism alone is doing the practice rather than sitting there with the entity, verbalizing the invocation, instilling the mind to then try to tap into the channel of how that entity communicates so that you can have your back and forth conversation. So once again, what I'm seeing most often for the more so new age spiritualists getting into the occult is they have the best setups. They have a lot of imagery, which is on point, but they're not actually doing the invocations. They're not actually sitting and verbalizing with discipline, with repetition and consistency, the call. They're not sending out the call and then they're not putting themselves in a position where they can receive the call or receive the communication after they sent out the call. So I'm seeing these people with their altars and they, they light their candle, they light their incense sticks, they're looking at their symbolism. Oftentimes they'll even take their phone out and put it on TikTok. I mean, you see this all over TikToks. Sometimes you see it on YouTube. And they'll, you know, they're very proud of their altars. They're very proud of their symbolism. And then they, once again, they light their candle, they light the incense stick, and they think that that's really basically all they need to do to establish this strong communication with this spirit or with this entity that it is that they're trying to connect to. And all these different things absolutely play a role. These things are significant. They have an effect on the unconscious and on the subconscious mind. They can help open up doorways for those entities to recognize your trying to communicate, but just by lighting the incense and lighting your candle and having the imagery present, that's not enough, okay? The practice is more so inside. It's what, it's what is within yourself. So if you're not coming from a strong intention of really wanting to have a communication with an entity of your choice, then you're going to lack the internal awareness that in order to actually get what you want, which is communication, it's going to require you to first send out the call, which is literally one of the most fundamental practices, which is the invocation, and then to sit in silence to receive the telepathic communication that you're calling for. Okay, this is oftentimes where it can come in very much handy to have the sigil of the entity you're trying to communicate with. And before you even do the invocation, just get your mind in a still state by focusing on a single point of that sigil for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, which can feel like a long time, but just do that to still your mind. Prepare your mind to receive the communication that you're wanting to, which is going to enter through the subconscious, unconscious mind. So most people, they don't do that. They don't send out the call and they don't sit and they don't receive the telepathic communication that they want. That's why they're not having crazy experiences. This is why they're failing when it comes to communication with the spirits. They're not allowing themselves to get in the space to understand how the communication speaks. Lighting the candle, lighting the incense, having the altar in front of you is not 
going to do the communication for you. It's going to set the stage. Think of it like a play. It's like you can set the stage with all the symbolism of the scene. You can make the scene look absolutely amazing and prepare it to be a good play. But if you're not a good actor, then it doesn't matter what the scene looks like because you don't know how to act inside of that scene. So the actor part is the ability to send out the call and then be still to receive the communication after you've sent the call, to even try to pick up on that communication, observing your mind, seeing if there's anything that comes into your internal dialogue that is a little bit different than what you've experienced before. These things are absolutely necessary and fundamental to establish a successful communication with a spirit or with an entity. Okay, so if I'm not a good actor, then I'm not going to be able to act in the scene. Okay, even though the scene can be perfectly set up and there could be side actors that are playing in the scene, if I'm the main character and I can't act, then it doesn't matter what the scene looks like. I can't act. It's not going to go well. It's not going to work. Okay, the movie can't be shot. So that's just a, a little bit of a analogy that I want to give for this similar type of um, concept. Okay, so I see so many people that are getting into the occult specifically where they're considering doing invocations and they're considering wanting to communicate with these entities and they just do all this extra shit with setting up everything, making it look wonderful, which is all external. You know, it's, it's actually, it's quite funny because it's so backwards, it's so reversed because truth be told, you don't even need an altar. You don't need anything. You don't need any tools to have successful communication with an entity other than a strong intention to really want to communicate and knowing how to send the call, and then also knowing what state you need to be in to receive the feedback from your call, to receive and establish the communication. So what we're seeing in today's time is a backwards practice where everyone wants the nice setup, and everyone wants the nice tools, and everyone wants to have the perfect incense with the perfect color candle, the coolest lighter, okay? then they wanna put it on their TikToks and make it look nice. Yet, they're not having any communication with the entity, okay? And if they are having communication, it's weak communication. It's just little subtle symbolism. They may notice like subtle, subtle correspondences, which is still good, that's still a place to be. Any correspondence or any form of communication in that way is definitely a success to a degree, but it can go much deeper than that and you can get much more out of it. You can make the experience much more rich and you can gain so much more. I mean, you could literally allow the entity completely inside of your consciousness so that that little dialogue that you hear in the back of your mind is coming from a different space in our universe. You can change your entire dialogue. So the person that you usually hear in your mind that tells you, hey, do this or don't do this or yes, no, that little internal voice you have, we all have one. That voice can completely shift when you've properly established a strong connection to an external spirit or to an external entity. And when you can observe your mind to that degree and you can listen to what that voice tells you, you can start communicating with that voice where you use your inner voice to communicate with the other inner voice that is now taking up space in your unconscious subconscious mind. That's how you have internal dialogue. That is what it means to have real communication. And you can start asking some significant questions, questions that there are many people that don't have answers to. I mean, it, you could ask whatever you want. I mean, imagine that. What if I told you you could pick out a piece of paper, write down the top five questions that you have that you want to gain answers to, that literally you can, you can truly gain answers on, like real authentic answers, any five questions, okay? I mean, think about it. Think about what questions you would ask. 
and think about how satisfied you would be and how happy you would be truly to receive those answers. And I'm sure you would spend a lot of time making sure those five questions are on point, right? Well, imagine if you learn the skill set or if you learn the tool on how to successfully connect with an entity that is clearly from a much higher density than our planet Earth that can see between the past, present, and future all at the same time and can literally overview your life experience and tell you certain things that no human has the answer to or tell you certain things about what could happen or what will happen or what you can do to make certain things happen that no book is going to tell you, that no studies are going to tell you. Imagine doing that whenever you want at all times and all it takes is your fundamental skill set on communication. See, this is the richness and this is the value that you get as a professional occultist. But once again, in the new age, people have it backwards. They don't have that discipline to still their minds. They don't oftentimes have the discipline to even send out the call. And it's, I mean, it's a really simple practice. It's not hard by any means. And there is not just one set way to send the call. There are many ways you can send the call. I have my own ways that work a wonderful for me. And then somebody else might have their own formula that works wonderful for them. So there are many ways to send the call, but there are some general fundamentals that you want to follow, which is sending out the call. You know, send out the words. Send out that vibratory pattern that says, hey, I am calling to you. I'm extending my free will to establish communication with you, fill in the blank of whatever entity you want, and you're opening yourself up and you're allowing that energy to come down and to influence you based on your intentions for the communication in the first place, whether that be to gain some wisdom, knowledge, understandings, answers, or power, or all of these things, okay? So this is one of the biggest reasons why people are failing. They're not disciplined. They have it reversed in their minds. They're looking more so externally to get results in their practice rather than looking internally and realizing to get the success, they need to come from within and they need to have the intention to really want to communicate and then follow that with the discipline to still the mind to pay attention to see if they can receive the communication. It's a lack of discipline and it's a lack of true intention towards what they actually want. What most people want, what I'm seeing in today's time, is they just want to look like spiritual practitioners. They want to look like they're powerful magicians and powerful occultists. And that's why their setups are so professional and look so nice and they have everything, but yet when it comes to their internal state, they're about as powerful as a chicken, okay? So it's one of the biggest failed things that I see in modern time spirituality. And by no means am I saying that everyone does that, but as spirituality is becoming more popular and as people are starting to realize that it is a real science and it has a lot of validity to it, there are more people turning over into spiritual development. There are more people saying, you know what? Rather than just focusing on everything physical and focusing on all the studies and the logistics, you know what? Maybe there's another side to life. And this is becoming more mainstream. So there are more people that are jumping ship from just the five senses physical reality to realizing there's an entire vault of unknown information that's open to us all within our unconscious minds. So the more people are jumping into spirituality, the more I'm starting to see there are people that are doing it wrong. There are people that are doing it backwards. And that is what it is. You know, I know that's naturally how it's going to be. And by no means am I trying to change the game. I know that this is just natural. This is a part of proper evolution. It's natural. I mean, people are going to make mistakes when they get into the practice and some of them are never going to correct those mistakes and they're going to stay like that. And some of them are going to be so inverted that they're going to teach other people that this is how they should do it for their success. But then that's going to come around and bite them in the ass in the long run because there are much more 
powerful principles to understand and develop to get real success. And if you're teaching something that is not based on those deeper principles, it's eventually going to come back and bite you in the ass because eventually you're going to have to learn those principles yourself to gain the success. So, um, you know, it's a very natural thing. It's, it's happening more and more. Literally, as the years go on, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get more and more. I mean, think of, literally think about it. Like 10 years from now, think about how many people that are on the spiritual side of social media, like YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, whatever social media you use, Facebook. 10 years ago, think about how many people were in that field and in that niche compared to where we are now, 2023. There's, it's like it's increased almost 50%, a 50% increase of people that are in the spiritual community, that are in positions of leadership, in positions of spreading influence. So that's a clear reflection that a lot of people are seeking spiritual knowledge, speaking, seeking spiritual advice and spiritual uh awareness and guidance, truly. So with that said, this is only going to increase as the years go on. So just be aware if you're someone listening to this, first, clearly use these principles for yourself. You know, be aware of what I'm talking about so you can apply them to yourself. But also for those of you that are already aware of these principles, be aware of how this is happening in the world around you. You're going to come across people that claim to be powerful occultists, claim to know what it is that they're talking about, claim that they are these, you know, super aware spiritual beings, yet their practice is done in reverse. They're spending more time with the external, looking at what's in front of them, looking at how perfect their setup can be, you know, wearing the right clothes all the time and making sure they dress perfect, you know, paint their nails black and wear the dark eyeliner, whatever the case is, wear their medallions with their sigils on it, which once again, I'm not saying any of these are bad, but I'm just making a point that these things are more so external rather than looking internally and realizing like at the end of the day, if you're serious, if you're the type of person that was in the space that I was in when I first started my practice, where I was in the mindset that if I don't get, if I don't get this, then I don't think there's any other way for me to survive in life. And when I say that, I was at a point in my life where I was so lost and I was so traumatized based on some of my previous life experiences that I was almost at a space where I didn't know if I was gonna live. I didn't know if I was gonna survive in life with society and with you know what I considered at the time normal people, okay? I went through a rough childhood. I went through some rough situations in my past. And I know other people have as well. And the, the position that I was at is that, the, the position that I was in is that I needed to succeed in spirituality to find myself, to figure out who I am, to, to literally unshell my soul and realize I have a purpose. And that was the position that I was in and I knew that. Now, my path is different than the average person. Clearly, I'm a black magician. So I went the negative path. I went the backwards path, the opposite direction. So it was a little bit harder for me to find my purpose because that path is so different than what the mainstream usually follows. But long story short, that's the, the mindset that I was in. That's the state of being that I was in when I started. And that's why I was so successful. And truly, you know, to start my practices, I didn't need all the tools. You know, I was, you know, I'm human. I made mistakes. I thought I needed everything to be perfect. I thought I needed my huge circle, the magician and the incense and, you know, all these other stones and whatnot. And yes, these things are valuable. And I even teach people that learn from me that you can use these tools to your benefit and get a lot of results from them. They do play a role, but the magic the real success and the real connections are, are first and foremost taking place inside of the self. Okay, it's all inside of the self. You don't need one tool. You don't need one thing, but your mind, your body, your soul, and your spirit to get success with your spiritual practices. Okay, and, and that's just a straight, honest reality. 
okay? It's all within you. You could have nothing. You could be homeless on the street as long as you have that intention of realizing what exists within the potential of the universe and you have a general idea of what you're trying to communicate with and you send out that call and you're disciplined enough to still the mind to receive the answers of your call or to receive the communication, you're now linked in to an extraterrestrial or a higher density force that can then start programming you, that can then start giving you information and guidance that previously you and no one else on this planet necessarily has access to unless you're another professional occultist or another occultist in general who knows how to establish those connections. And if you think that the highest levels of our government aren't in communication with higher density forces, then you're fooling yourself. You're wrong because they are, okay? The most powerful people on this planet as a fact are in communication with higher density forces whether that's unconscious communication or conscious communication. And the ones that are conscious of it are the most powerful. This is the real ruling class on the planet, physically and psychically. All right. So with that being said, I think I shared enough in this video. Okay. Definitely take in this information, use it to your benefits and be the observer. All right. If you enjoyed this, come down here and hit the thumbs up button. Also, Come down here and hit the notification bell because I post videos as often as I can. And with content like this, you absolutely do not want to be missing out, okay? Now also come down here and hit the subscribe button because by subscribing, you're further linking into the content. There really is an energetic component that goes behind that, okay? So go ahead and subscribe. If not, it is what it is, okay? Now also, you have my full permission to copy and paste this link and send it out to anyone, family, friends, social, social media platforms, you name it, you have my full permission to copy and paste this content and send it out. Okay, let's spread this information. And that's gonna help me build my empire, all right? Now I also wanna take your awareness to a private Facebook community, which is within the YouTube description. If you click the little drop down. Go into the description. You're going to see there's a link that says private Facebook community. If you click that link and follow where it takes you, you can eventually request to join. Now, in this private Facebook community, there is almost 700 members. It's growing on a daily basis, especially now since I've been promoting it more often. There's about four moderators that are a part of it that manage it. And... There are people posting on an active basis specifically around occult information and just topics in general that are important to understand and, and, and generally people sharing their experience. Okay, this is a great place to connect with other like-minded individuals. So if this is something that you wanna gain access to, which is an extremely valuable group, especially in regards to the other information that's on there where there's an entire file section of PDF books that are all cult-based in nature that some of the members somehow got into the group that are books where some of them, some of these books are around the $1,000 range. It blows my mind. I don't know how they got it, but it's in that group if you go to the file section. So once again, if you wanna join within this group, you can request to because it's private and you know where to go. It's in the YouTube description. You'll find it, okay? Now, I'm going to take your awareness to literally the most important link within the entirety of the YouTube description itself, all right? This is going to be the first link in the YouTube description, okay? In this link, you are gaining access to the Patreon, okay? On my Patreon, I have an entire vault of exclusive occult content. None of this content is on my public YouTube channel, and that is for many intentional reasons. It's not meant for the public. It's basically like a secondary YouTube channel at this point, except everything on the Patreon is more advanced and more personal than what you're getting here on my public channel, okay? As you move into tier two and up, you're gaining access to an entire magic training course, which I feel like would be extremely valuable, especially if you're a beginner occultist and you're looking for a structured format to follow to start developing your psychic capabilities, okay? Then as you move into tier three and up, you're gaining access to what is called the Universe B 
Vampire Service. This is literally the most popular tier of the Patreon, tier number three, and that alone speaks for itself. This is a service that I perform on the 29th of every single month that has one, and it's designed to completely change the energetic structure and bodies of the individuals who are receiving the service to be more so universe B dominant. So essentially what that means is more so negatively polarized, service to self oriented. What this does is this gives these individuals an ability to be more so receptive to their unconscious and subconscious minds, which is feminine in nature. And it gives them a psychic capability to pull an energy from dark energy and chaos within the environment around them to transmute into their own power and evolutionary potential. All right. If this is something that you want to take advantage of, you can definitely do so. Once again, that is tier number three, which is a part of the Patreon first link in the YouTube description. Now, as you move into tier number four of the Patreon, this is a new tier that I've recently added. And with this tier, you gain access to everything which is in the previous tiers, except you get some bonus content. You have psychic predictions on a monthly basis, which is based on your personal zodiac sign. And I use my tarot deck and my personally created oracle deck to do your psychic predictions. It's designed to give you an ability to better navigate the energies of the month every single month that you are a top tier member, okay? And you also gain access to a private live stream every single month as well, all right? So if that's something you wanna take part in, definitely consider it tier number four, first link in the YouTube description, all right? That's gonna wrap it up. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanna give a special shout out to everyone who is a Patreon member, specifically for taking your knowledge, your practices, and your studies to that other side. Big shout out to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Now, I'm gonna take your awareness to the second link in the YouTube description. You can't miss it, second link below. This is where you can book a very unique tarot card reading with me. I promise that this is a tarot card reading that you've never received before. And the reason for that is, is because I understand the Kabbalistic tree way more than the average person. So what I can do is I can literally pinpoint exactly where you are on that tree. I can tell you what you're feeling, experiencing, and going through in the present moments, and then what to expect moving into your near and your long-term future, all based on your positioning on that Kabbalistic tree itself, okay? Once again, I don't know anyone else that does tarot card readings that are similar to mine. I've done about a thousand readings at this point. I do a reading every single day. I've been doing this for over a year and I've received tons of valuable feedback. If this is something that you wanna take advantage of, go ahead and consider it. Second link below, book your reading there, okay? Now, within that same second link below, you have an option to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. This would be a great opportunity for those of you who have more so personal questions um, in regards to your own occult experience that you want to ask somebody like myself and just hear what I have to say. You know, as a professional occultist, there are many things that you've been through or many things that you might end up going into and experiencing later down the road that I already have information on, that I've already experienced myself and I can sort of help guide you in regards to some of the psychic phenomena or occult phenomena that you've experienced in your life or will be experiencing, okay? So that would be a great opportunity for those of you who want to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Now, for those of you that are taking your practice really to that deeper degree, I have mentorship options, okay? I have a six-week mentorship and I have a three-month mentorship. This is primarily going to be for people clearly taking their practice to that next level, but specifically for people that are getting themselves into initiatory practices, okay? So if you're initiating yourself into the Kabbalistic tree, this would be a great option for you because basically with that mentorship, I'm acting as a guide for you, pretty much taking you through the journey, letting you know some of the things that you, are, you can expect to experience, some of the things that you've been experiencing, and just giving you extra awareness on what it is that you're going through and how you can better navigate, okay? So if that's something you're interested in, check it out, second link below. That's where you can find all those different services. And if you wanna read more about the details on them, once again, second link below. I'll wrap that up there. Now, 
I'm gonna take your awareness to the third link in the YouTube description. This is where you can join and become a YouTube member. You click that third link, you go up top, hit join. Once you become a YouTube member, you're getting access to a multitude of different benefits. But most importantly, you're gaining access to what I call the Psychic Warfare Emoji Program. So what this is, is this is a sequence of emojis that I've designed myself that are based on real occult principles. And you can use them in a specific configuration, link in the name of a target, hit enter, and it will actually cause psychic effects to the target of your choice. This is the most simple form of utilizing psychic warfare through the internet platform. There are over 2,000 posts where people have already used this. There are people right now in this moment that are taking advantage of it. If this is something that you wanna use for yourself, once again, join, become a YouTube member, and then you're gonna have access, all right? With that being said, this is where it's going to come to its end point. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate all of you very, very much. I hope you all have an amazing rest of the day or night, wherever you are, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.